Greetings home nuggets and welcome to Pro Photo Tips. My name is Josh Cripps and you can find me online at the Nature Photography Academy. In the first part of this video, we learned that there are as many shapes and styles of grad filters as there are lobsters in the ocean. I also told you that my grad filter of choice is the three stop soft 100 millimeter wide rectangular drop in filter. But I didn't actually tell you how to put this thing to use, so stick around because that's what we're going to do right now. The key to using a grad filter effectively is timing. This filter is designed to tame a bright sky and bring it more in line with a dark foreground. And that specific situation is most likely to occur at sunrise or sunset when the sun is lighting up the sky, but the ground is in shadow. If you look at your histogram during this time, you'll see that you probably have a U-shaped histogram like this. And that means you have a lot of shadows and a lot of highlights separated by a tonal gulf and a grad filter is exactly what allows you to bridge that gap. Could you use a grad filter in the middle of the day? Sure, but it's probably unnecessary since the sun is likely illuminating the sky and the ground fairly evenly. So once you know you need to use a grad filter, you also need to know how strong of a grad filter to use. During magic hour, the sky is anywhere between three and five stops brighter than the ground, which makes a three stop filter an ideal candidate to start with. And if the sky is just thermonuclear bright, you might want to consider layering a two stop filter over the top. You also want to think about whether to use a soft, a hard, or a reverse grad. Hard grads are great for when you have very abrupt transitions between the sky and the ground, well-defined horizons. Reverse grads are best when the horizon is the brightest part of the scene, like right at sunrise or sunset. And soft grads are the big catch-all for pretty much every other kind of situation. If you're not sure which one to use, start with soft grad. As far as attaching your filters to the lens goes, you can handhold them, in which case I recommend pinching them by the corner and splatting them flat against your lens like this. That helps prevent light leak and any reflections coming in off the back of the filter. Now, hand holding is a perfectly cromulent method, which I personally use for years. But for consistency, as well as to minimize the scratches you get on your filters, you should use a filter holder, which looks something like this. Now, these generally attach to the lens via an adapter ring, which screws onto the front of the lens. The filter holder then clips in, and it allows you to easily stack filters, be totally consistent from shot to shot, and it gives you a couple of free hands during shooting, which I suggest you employ thusly. As I mentioned in the previous part of this video, these big square grads can be slid up or down within the holder. So the best way to know if they're in the right spot is either to take a test shot or to go to live view on your camera. This will give you a preview of the photo you're about to take so you can see if you need to adjust the position of your grad at all. Canon users, you might need to hit your depth of field preview button in order to get an accurate preview. Another cool thing about grad filters is that they can be rotated to suit your scene. If one corner of your sky is brighter than the other, angle the grad down in that location in order to tame the highlights there. Now that your filters are in the right place, double check your exposure. Because you've darkened the sky relative to an already dark foreground, don't be surprised if your photo is, well, dark. So really pay attention to your histogram in order to make sure you're getting a good exposure. At this point, your photo should be looking pretty great, but I still recommend you slide your filters around a little bit to see if you get a look that you like better. So to recap, here's our checklist for using a grad filter effectively. First, you want to shoot around sunrise or sunset. Start with a three-stop filter and decide if you need a soft, a hard, or a reverse grad. Put the filter in your filter holder, then either use a test shot or live view to make sure it's positioned in just the right spot. You also want to make sure the image fits with your aesthetic preferences. If the sky is still too bright compared to the foreground, well, you might need to put another filter on top. If the sky is too dark, maybe you need to use a filter that's not quite as strong. Finally, 
constantly be checking your histogram and your highlights to make sure that your exposure is good. This should give you a great starting point for working with grad filters, but of course this list is not meant to be prescriptive because in art you should always salt to your own personal tastes. The best thing to do once you have the basics down is simply to shoot a ton until you figure out what you like and don't like and start to develop your own instincts for which filters to use and when. In the next part of this video, you're going to learn a lot of best practices in order to get the most out of your grad filters, so be sure to subscribe. You can also join our newsletter for even more free photo tips. Until next time, have fun and happy shooting.